Hey there, beautiful soul. Welcome to Cultivate Your Joyful Life, where we believe true fulfillment blooms from within. I'm Emily Liu, your certified life coach, and I'm on a mission to help you create a life you freaking love. In a world where we constantly juggle priorities from career to parenting, relationships to health, it's easy to feel overwhelmed or not enough. But don't worry, in this corner of the universe, I'm here to share practical tips and inspiration to help you access your inner joy right now. So grab your favorite drink, settle in, and let's cultivate your joyful life together. Here we go. Hi friends, I hope you're staying cool in this summer heat and you're enjoying the summer. Today is Zoe's second birthday. I'm so excited to celebrate my little baby. She is so sassy, so fun, and I hope she never grows up. (laughs) I know that's not going to happen, but yeah, I just picked up a cake for her. We're going to celebrate her tonight, and I'm just so, so excited for that. And I can't help when I look at my little kids how I think that one day they're going to have such a beautiful life that they create. I don't know why, I just get that feeling like they're so full of potential. Anything that they want, they can set their minds towards and they can achieve it. And that's what I want to talk to you about in today's episode because lately I've been having a lot of clients who have really big dreams. They may feel like it's really big in their head, but when I'm speaking to them, I'm like, oh yeah, that's totally doable. (laughs) But I know that they're paralyzed by like the how, like how, what am I going to do? Is this really possible? On my life coaching side of the business, I actually have three clients right now that are really keen on starting a side hustle or they want to start their own small business. So that's really exciting. I have another client who wants to make a career pivot from investment banking to more of a creative pursuit because he knows that if he continues this path of eye banking, he's just going to be so soul sucked. I have another client who's really wanting to call in a marriage, like a life partner, a romantic partner. And I have another client I'm working with that wants to move to a more high vibe location slash city that is filled with more like-minded people than where she feels like she is currently. So what I want to share here is that no matter what your dream is, I believe that it didn't come to you by accident. Like your heart's desire is so different from another person's desire. And I think a lot of times people feel like when they have an idea or a goal or a dream, they tend to go to, well, doesn't everybody have this? Like, doesn't everyone want to be famous or become a VP or have a six-figure business or, I don't know, fall in love and have kids and get married? Well, the answer is no. (laughs) You might feel that way because maybe you're in a room filled with other people that are pursuing the same thing. So for instance, if you are wanting to be an actor, you're taking acting classes. Yeah, you might be surrounded with people who are like, I want to be a famous A-list celebrity one day. But that's a very small percentage of the population. Even people who are like, I want to be a business owner. Maybe you're just in on a lot of entrepreneurship forums and circles where that's where like-minded people are congregating. But I promise you, not everybody wants to be a business owner. I actually have a lot of job-seeking clients that are like, oh no, I would never start my own business. I just want to like support another person's vision. And I want to do that really well and enjoy the rest of my life without worrying about entrepreneurship, right? So bottom line is whatever that nudge is inside of you, that you keep getting this idea, you keep starting to think about this goal or this um, dream lifestyle that you have, that is not by accident. That is designed specifically for you. And what I want to talk to you about today is how to not dismiss it, but rather start to pursue it. And I'm actually going to break it down into a very practical exercise for you. So step number one is to put it all down on a piece of paper I don't know if you're into Pinterest boards. If you're a visual person, you can start a visual board. If you like just 3D, like magazine and vision board in person, you can do that as well. But the goal here is to just 
dream out your scenario, whatever that goal is, whatever that thing is that you want to pursue, write it down. What do you want? No matter how ridiculous or out of reach it might feel like, just write it down. You know, five years ago, I was really into creating vision boards and making goals lists and really thinking about and dreaming up my dream life. And back then, I used to put things like, I really want a luxury car. Like, I'd never had a luxury car in my life. I really wanted a spacious home that was filled with plants and just felt like it could be a Japandi style slash Wabi style zen-like home. I really wanted flexibility and freedom and to be able to travel and do whatever I wanted to do. And again, back then, all of this seemed like a pipe dream. I was just like, oh, these are really pretty things, but I don't know how. And today, I actually have created all of that for myself. I have a Tesla. I was able to buy a home that I can renovate into my own style. I have a lot of flexibility and freedom in the way that I've structured my life. And I'm not saying any of this to brag, but to really hopefully share with you, back then I didn't know the how. Everything felt out of reach. All these things were just like, yeah, 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 that's nice, but that's not for me. And yet somehow it has come into fruition. And what I'll add to this is for a while, I was just a big dreamer. Like I would think about all these lofty goals and I got into this hamster wheel of just achieving, achieving, achieving and going after things and just building a bigger and grander vision and constantly thinking about the next thing. Well, the past year, I've intentionally, like by life design, taken a break from all of that. And I don't have a vision board. I don't have any goals written down. And I actually think it was very healing for me because I needed to tap into more of the feminine energy and just be and not necessarily be so like goal driven. And it it was very healing for me to experience that for an extended period of time and just allowing myself to be like, okay, we don't need to move the goalpost. We don't need to go for the next thing. Like we can just be content where we are. And it was very, very liberating. And I'm at the point now where after this episode, I'm actually going to take my own medicine and (laughs) write out my goals because I do know that right now, at least, I am very directionless. Like I don't really know what I want. And so because I haven't really taken the time to put my words on paper, I feel like I'm just meandering. And again, that's not a bad feeling or a bad season, but I'm a big believer that I'm not really going to achieve what I want because I don't know what I want. (laughs) So this is your opportunity to just allow yourself to dream. If anything were possible, if everything were equally easy to obtain, well, what do I want my life to look like? What would be in my life? What would I be doing? What would I be creating? What would I be pursuing? What would I spend my days and time doing? whether it is work-related or when I'm not working. What are the experiences that I am creating? How am I feeling on a day-to-day? Like These are the questions that I want you to be able to ask yourself and journal out so that you can start to create a vision of this is the ideal. This is not where I am today, but this is what I'm striving towards. And again, leave the how for now because actually step two of this process is to after you've jotted it down to walk away from it like don't look at it again unless a new idea of what you want populates great you can add it to the list otherwise just take a break step away for i don't know it doesn't have to be like a specific day but three days four days a week when you stop thinking about it then that's when i want you to go back to it and with a fresh lens Look at your list and see, does this still feel aligned to me? Do I want to modify this in any way? Does it still excite me and energize me? How does this make me feel? And if it gives you a very positive feeling, like it radiates a lot of joy or excitement or enthusiasm or like, wow, like 
calmness and joy and peace, then that no- then you know, okay, this vision has come to me not by accident, but for a reason. Let me just sit with this. Again, we don't need to put the how into the picture quite yet. We just need to allow ourselves to see, is this still what I want to achieve? Is this what I'm striving for? The next step of all this is I want you to find someone you trust to share this vision with. Now, this is very important. It can't be just anybody. We all have friends out there that are more pragmatic or what we call like realist. We also know people out there or have friends out there that are the dreamers on and or the optimistic people and or the champions. Like the person you're thinking of should have bigger dreams than you. They should inspire you. They should be like, yeah. And when they hear your dream, they don't automatically jump to, okay, like you're Delulu, <laughs> get your head out of the clouds. But they're like, oh yeah, like why wouldn't you think that's possible? Or that sounds wonderful. Like that sounds like you are really inspired to do that. What's stopping you? Okay. So that's very important is to make sure that you have friends and people like that in your life that can give you that type of support. This isn't to say like the friends who are more pragmatic or risk adverse or focused on like seeing the problems or whether or not it's possible are bad friends. Not at all. We all just have different people in our lives that we know we can trust to go to them with certain things. Like I really want you to make sure the friend that you're going to share this vision with is somebody who also thinks bigger. Like they also feel like, yeah, I want to create a better life. So let's do this together. Let's hold each other accountable. Or, you know, that doesn't seem like that big of a stretch. And in fact, I actually know somebody who does that. Or I have a friend I can introduce you to or a connection that I can make or resources that you can tap into. And you need to be able to discern who you're going to share a vision with. Like I, for instance, I'll give you an example of a time when I was renting in LA. My apartment was $2,000 a month. And to me, I thought that was a big stretch already. Like I come from Arizona where the monthly rent, I was used to it being like $800 a month. This is all before inflation. And, you know, to me, $2,000 was a lot of money. And then my best friend moved into a new apartment building in downtown Los Angeles. And it was like the vision that I had, like a high rise tower, floor to ceiling, glass windows, just very high vibe and kind of like a hotel feel apartment that had all the amenities and When I found out the rent was about $3,500 a month, my jaw dropped. It was like, oh my gosh, that's so out of reach. That's so expensive. I don't know if I can do that. And what I'm really grateful for is having that friend that was like, actually, Emily, you can do that. (laughs) You just need to look at your finances differently. Like this is financially feasible for you. You're just scared because it's the next level for you. It's not what you're used to. And so I'll get more into this later, but that's the type of friend that you need is somebody who isn't going to be like, oh my gosh, like that much money for rent? That's crazy. That's out of reach. But rather than somebody who can actually take a look and be like, well, why do you think that's crazy, right? Because we all have different perspectives and we all have different lenses that we look at the roll through. And this friend is just has a very big abundant mindset where she it's not so much like she came from a privileged background, actually quite the opposite. But she just saw it as, wow, like imagine if you move into this apartment, like how much you're going to up level. Like how much more you're going to feel inspired and you're going to create more. And it just gave me a different way of looking at things and I'll get more into it in a bit, but it was the best decision that I could have made for myself. So again, a lot of people are going to project their own fears onto your fears. And so you want to find that person who can hold your fears 
and just lovingly examine them and even maybe start to question them. Like, is this really true? And that's what we're going to get into in the next step, which is what I like to call, okay, and then what? (laughs) What if that happens? Because our anxiety, our anxious mind is always going to future project to the worst case scenario. Never the best case scenario, but the worst case scenario thinking. So we can talk about this and Winston Churchill has a really great quote that he summarizes all of this with. He says, I remember the old man who said he had a great many troubles in his life, but the worst of them never happened. In other words, like all of the worst memories and experiences were all just imagined in the head. So I want you to take a look at your list or take a look at that big goal. Take a look at that big dream that you've created. And especially if you think it's not going to happen because of some kind of fear or anxiousness around what's going to happen, when we don't know it to be 100% true because it's not yet happened, that's when we get to really start to shine a light on the darkness. I call the darkness the fear. So just really shining a light on that so we can expose it and bring it up so that we can start to examine it together. So you know, going back to the decision to move into like a $3,500 month apartment and signing a 14 month lease, my mind went into, okay, then what's going to happen? Well, what if I lose my biggest client or uh, my business completely tanks and I start making $0 and I can't afford it? Okay, well, then what? Well, then I'd have to dig into my savings. Okay, then what? Well, then I'd probably find another job or maybe I'd ask some friends for support or cut back on my expenses. And I'm realizing that actually there's a lot of things that could happen in the scenario, like the ladder to rock bottom is quite long from where I am. And along the way, I actually can catch myself. I can actually make sure that I like climb onto the ladder and I climb back up instead of hitting the very bottom of the pit, right? And so just looking at that, it could be any worst case scenario. So going back to my client who wants to leave a very cushioned job in investment banking, you know, making a lot of money to pursuing a creative pursuit, the same fears come up about money, right? It's like, well, what if I don't have my financial security anymore? Okay, well, then what? Well, then I would need to cobble together a plan and maybe take a side gig while I pursue this other creative journey. Okay, and then what? Well, actually, maybe I will get a client and I will be excited about the work that I'm doing and maybe I'll even produce more work. And actually, maybe I can even surpass my last salary or at least earn enough to make a stable living because I'm actually doing what I enjoy, right? So this exercise is so helpful to just put out the worst case scenarios. But along the way, you may actually, in this process, start to uncover and unearth the best case scenarios. So what actually happened is when I signed my lease, I had a fire lit up under me. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to like now produce more. I need to earn more. And so I in many ways, up-leveled my thinking. I up-leveled my way of being. I up-leveled my programs and my prices and the way that I put myself out there. And now when I look back, signing that lease actually put me on a completely different path. It was the path to the dream vision that I had. You know, I'm just thinking about another example of when I was in downtown I wanted to find a co-working space and I ended up finding WeWork. They had a competitor who charged a little bit less, but it was still a big stretch for me at the time. I think each monthly membership fee was like $400 a month. And to me, I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is like a lot of money. This is a big expense, but I don't know, I just had this nudge that I needed to be in this type of environment to put myself around others that were also looking to build a business and to be successful. And within a month, they did like this broadcast where they introduced the newest members. And 
somebody actually reached out to me from that email list and they were like, oh, I saw that you're a career coach. I'm actually looking for a career coach. Can I potentially work with you? And we ended up signing a contract and that contract paid for the entire membership. Well, at least for 10 months of the membership. So, you know, it's these little things that put you onto the right path that you're meant to be on. But our worst case scenario thinking can keep us stuck from even taking that first action because we're so concerned with the what ifs. So this is, again, just a really powerful exercise for you to put a light on the worst case scenarios and really thinking about, okay, well, what would happen from here? And then what? And then what? And then what? Until you get to a point of neutralizing the fear and realizing, actually, this fear doesn't seem so scary anymore because I've been able to tackle it head on. And actually, along the way, there's all these different solutions to it. So I stopped giving the power all to the fear. I start to take some of that power back to the point where I feel like, okay, maybe I can do this. Maybe this is achievable for me. And I do want to share that there are some fears that may feel like there's no solution around them. And this is when you probably are starting to get into more deeply rooted inner trauma that may need some healing around. And having a expert support would be really helpful whether it's a coach or a therapist, just really somebody who can hold that fear and help you work through it if it feels like it's too big to tackle on your own. So for example, if your fear is maybe you have a dream of finding like your own true love, but you're coming from a family who arranges marriages and you want to break an arranged marriage because that's not your person but your fear is being disowned by your family or being ostracized or outcasted. You know, that could be a really true fear for a lot of people who are wanting to make sure that they're still approved of or validated or belonged or have a sense of belongingness. And so in those situations, when you need help getting to the bigger core root of a trauma, you need support around that. Just know at this point in time that no matter how big the fear is, there's support to work through it, okay? Truly, no matter what happens, we only have life happen. I say happen for us, but a lot of people see it as life happening to us. And whatever happens, we're just going to get to a point where we find the solution around it, where we find a way to work through it. And so that's really the goal here. But again, going back to pursuing your bigger dreams, you have these big goals, you have this big desire, your heart is calling you towards something. Don't just let the fear stop you there. Expose the fear. Look at the fear. Examine it from the then what angle. Play out that scenario to the end. And see that there are solutions in front of you. There are ways where, again, before you hit rock bottom, you're going to be able to climb onto that next ladder. So hopefully the next step is when you realize, okay, this is just an unwarranted fear. Let me take that first action step. What is that first thing that is just going to get me out of my bubble and into the room or the conversation or the resource or the action step that I need to take to shift me into the life that I actually want to live. The reason why I use the bubble as an example is because I just got off a coaching call with my client who's an investment analyst and He's early on in his career, which I want to give him so much kudos for taking the time to think about this and what he really wants. It's clear like he went the safe route. He majored in economics, went to a great school, went into iBanking, and he's just really realizing, I don't want to see myself here in my late 20s, early 30s, all the way to 50s. Like This is not the route for me. I don't even care about finance. 
what else is out there for me. And he knows like his soul is creative writing. Like he wants to be a creative writer. He wants to be a creative art director. So, you know, he lives in this beautiful city filled with entrepreneurship and creativity. And yet all he knows and what he eats and breathes and sleeps is finance. And so through our coaching, he realized, wow, I'm kind of like in this bubble. I don't even know anybody who's in the creative writing space. I don't even know anybody who works in an art department at a company or the brand and marketing side of the company. All I know is finance. And so his homework, like his very first step is to join a meetup group to find a environment where he can actually pursue creative writing. Um, he's been so busy working grueling hours in investment banking. I told him, even if you spend 10 minutes doing creative writing this week, just do it because each action that you take towards the path that you want to be on is just going to unlock another action or another conversation or another clarity piece that is missing from the puzzle. And I'm just so excited for him to branch out and burst out of that bubble so that he can finally uh, be in the bubble that he wants to be in. So all this boils down to intentional life design and doing that scary thing that you want to do and taking the first step. You know, again, I think about when I signed that lease to this really scary number that was way above my financial thermostat that I was used to, that catapulted me to the next level. And my husband and I, I remember at the time, were like three months into our lease, we said, wow, like we love this comfort and this lifestyle. We can never go back to a crappy apartment. Like we need to keep this as our new baseline. And, you know, that's something that we have worked towards in trying to achieve because every single time you conquer that scary thing, you do that scary thing, you're still alive, you're still breathing. It actually builds more confidence in yourself, one, but two, it just puts you on the path for the next level thinking for the next level problem, for the next level challenge, for the next level fear. And so it's not really about an end goal. I believe like you just climb up another ladder, <laughs> another ladder that you feel like, oh my gosh, there's so many ways to like hit rock bottom. And now like the stakes are even higher in many ways. But again, a lot of times that is the fear that's at the very bottom of the pit. And, and, to actually hit that rock bottom, just imagine all of these levels of the ladder being a safety landing zone for you to reach. You know, I had a setback. Great. This isn't like the end all be all doomsday. Again, your mind might think about it that way, but actually, okay, now that I'm on this landing pad, where do I want to go from here? Is there, any, is there maybe a new ladder that you need to climb? Is there a new direction that you need to go? And so a lot of you are maybe on this pivotal landing spot where you get to ask, okay, do I want to stay here or do I want to climb up this ladder that I'm on or do I want to maybe go sideways and find the next ladder to climb and hopefully that ladder is towards the ideal path that I want to be on. So I just really hope that visualization helps you because, again, just to summarize all this, your dream, your goal, whatever that dream or goal is for you is not by accident. It's on purpose and it is achievable. You just have to be able to shine a light on that fear. So play out the what ifs, go through these step-by-step -step exercises that I've walked you through and Make sure that when you're not on your deathbed, you're saying things like, oh, if only I did this, because we all think that one day we're going to finally do X, Y, Z, but there's never a perfect time. There's never the right time. The only time is now, right? So your mind is always going to come up with excuses to procrastinate or to delay. Not anymore. Now is the time to just shine a light and we don't need to figure out all the how-to steps. We just need to figure out the first step. 
What is it that you want to do to walk you towards your dreams? The first tiny step. It's all we're doing. And that's going to unlock another tiny step and then another and another and another. And the next thing you know, wow, you've created the life that you want and it's no longer a dream. It's your reality. So that's the goal here. And I, again, hope by me sharing these personal examples, I was once in your shoes where I just felt like everything was out of reach. There's just no way. And again, I get to talk about it with some perspective on it in hindsight now. Whatever you think is impossible is possible. It may not happen overnight, but I promise you, if you start to plant the seeds today, you take that first step, action step today, absolutely, you will get to where you want to be. It's within reach. It's going to be that or even something better. Sometimes I look back and I'm like, oh, you could have never envisioned this life for myself. It's way better than I, my imagination came up with. <laughs> and I'm not saying like every day is perfect or like my life is perfect. Of course, there's always going to be days where things feel sideways or circumstances that feel really challenging. And I feel because I've been able to prove to myself what is possible by taking the action despite the fear or like looking at the fear in its face and doing the thing anyway, it's really built a level of trust and confidence within myself to continue pursuing the things that I want to pursue. So hopefully that is helpful too. And just knowing that confidence is a muscle that is built. Confidence really comes from competence. And competence comes from doing something and being practiced at it. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm going to be back next week. And I believe we're talking about raising your financial thermostat, which will be a fun and juicy topic with our guest expert. So I can't wait to see you then. And I hope you continue to cultivate your joyful life. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you enjoyed it and you're not following me on social media already, come follow me and join the conversation on our latest post. I'm over at Cultivite, or you can visit our website, cultivite.com and learn more. And don't forget to hit subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss another episode. I can't wait to connect with you again soon. Have a joyful day.